If you're an introverted realtor and you want to get on YouTube in order to generate endless free leads, but you just don't know how to get outside of your own head in order to take action because of your fear of being in front of the camera and being softer spoken, this interview is exactly what you need. Today I brought on Doug Bear, who as an introverted agent went on and is now generating over $2,000 GCI per YouTube video. And over the course of this year, he'll be breaking six figures in income from his YouTube channel. But also in this interview, Doug not only breaks down his entire content process from idea generation to recording in a very simple way that anybody can do, and also his editing process, but more importantly, he breaks down as a father of three young kids and a husband, how he actually manages creating content while balancing the family so that he can stay consistent, doesn't get distracted, and continues to build momentum and generate multiple leads every single week. So two quick things before getting started. Number one, I want We'll link all of Doug's incredible content in the description below so that you can check it out for yourself and see the incredible content that is so easy to record that's generating him multiple leads every single week. And also I will link Doug's calendar below so that if you would like to chat with him about getting his support as well as mine to scale your business and YouTube channel, you can book a free call with him to chat about that as well. So without further ado, let's bring on Doug and talk about how as an introverted agent, like I also used to be, can take action action with YouTube with very simple videos that anybody can record and start to generate endless high quality leads with your ideal clients leveraging YouTube for realtors. All right, Doug, so super excited to have you here, man, and to kind of unpack the incredible journey that you've had on YouTube and the success that you've seen um, in not the biggest amount of time and you've done some really cool things and gotten some great results so i know that this is going to be one that makes a, a massive relatable impact on a lot of people so just excited to have you here what's going on yeah i appreciate it thanks for the opportunity just excited to dive in and uh you know kind of tell about what i've been experiencing on youtube and Hopefully it helps somebody else watching. Of course. Well, let's dive into that. Before getting into the tactical, let's just kind of learn a little bit more about who Doug Bear is, you know, where you're from, what got you to this point, and then we can start diving into the strategies that you've been using. Yeah. Um, so I'm Doug. I'm in the uh, Philadelphia area, about an hour north of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. Um, you know, I got into real estate. I'm in seventh, seventh year now and uh, found you actually on YouTube, uh, which is how I started my journey. I think you had like 30,000 subscribers at the time. Um, so a few years I've been following you. And then I just started posting. Uh, when I started, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just doing, you know, the r most random videos like, you know, home inspections, like all the, all the stuff that just doesn't really convert that well. And, uh, and then I started uh, following your blueprint and that's when things started changing. That's crazy. Well, you know, so I'm, I'm excited because that's a, a common thing that I see is people getting started and feeling like it just, it's, it's not cut out for them. It's not going to work for them because they don't get the traction that they're seeing instead of saying, maybe it is for me, but maybe I've just been doing it wrong. And I think that's a really important delineation that we could start to unpack. But the first thing that I'm always curious about is why did you even dive into YouTube in the first place, you know, and, and make that a bit of a priority for your business? So what made me want to uh, pursue YouTube is actually uh, when I figured out when I found out that, um, you know, YouTube is the second largest search platform owned by these first largest and um, if you optimize it correctly, then, you know, you post it on there and it's there forever. It can be found forever, you know? So that's that's kind of the biggest thing for me is, you know, all these other social medias, which they work in, in itself, but, um, you know, you make one video, it could be there and, and search, you know, show up for a while. 100%. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. important, especially as an agent that, you know, so many people are focusing on different platforms, maybe just because it's the easiest or the most familiar, not realizing that, you know, people always talk about consistency being the key. And that, that is very true, but it's important to be consistent with the right things. And I think that's where a lot of people fall short is that you could be consistent with the wrong things for 10 years and not see any results or fruit of your labor, right? And and you kind of went through that transitionary phase, which is really cool. And I'm, I'm excited that you met about that. But let's talk about your YouTube journey. What kind of results have you been getting? And for you, what did that look like? What type of content have you been finding has been the best for you, your market, and, and being able to generate leads? So um, it's kind of funny because 
I don't have one specific style of video that actually is bringing in more business than the rest. They're kind of all bringing in business. Um, yeah. You know, I just told you the other day that uh, I just got my first uh, listing off of a YouTube channel, uh, a video, and it was actually from a vlog tour. I mean, I've done home tours. I've done, you know, everything that's pretty much on the blueprint. And the vlog tour is the one that got the call. So it, it was funny because the seller had been trying to sell their house uh, for a while. She got a, a text uh, of my video from her sister out in California who said, hey, uh, this guy, you know, I, I'm searching for realtors in your area. This guy popped up. You should give him a call. So it was actually kind of really neat how it happened. Um, but a vlog tour of all things got me my first listings. But yeah, I've done everything from, you know, vlog tour, pros and cons, cost of living, and, and just the collection of all of them have been making the phone ring. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting because a lot of people make the assumption that the content on YouTube is only going to attract buyers. And a lot of people seem to forget two things. You never know who's watching. Again, look at that crazy scenario. But also, a lot of buyers are sellers first. And so I think it's it's really cool that you got that experience on the listing side. Um, but there's a lot that I want to unpack related to that vlog tour. So you've done it all. You've followed the blueprint and you're starting to see traction. You know, you're now seeing, I think, you know, you know, you mentioned that you're seeing upwards of $2,000 um, per video when you start to average, you know, the, the amount of GCI you've done by the mm -hmm. amount of videos. So do you want to maybe kind of talk about what that's been like and maybe how motivating that could be when you're struggling to, to get that next uh, video out? Yeah, I mean, definitely. So like when I started, I didn't get a reach out. I, I heard nothing from anybody until about seven months in of posting as consistently as I can. Um, but then once I started getting leads and then I started getting some sales and uh, I ended up so far, I have 65,000 GCI from I just posted my 31st video. So that's about, you know, if you think about it as how much you made per video is about two thousand dollars. And I'm like, well, shoot, I got to make some more videos because <laughs> I could use I could use more of that. But um, yeah, it's it's just when I change the the mindset of thinking of it that way, it's definitely motivating. Um, you know, maybe not all of them are going to hit, but the, the whole collection of them work together on your channel. Agreed. And, and you know, there's there's a really important element that I know that, you know, I hope you kind of add some layers to this about, which is that you don't have the biggest channel. You know, you don't have 20, 30, 40, 50,000 subscribers. You're not getting thousands of views on every single video or hundreds of comments. And those vanity metrics that a lot of people, you know, think, oh, wow, 65K GCI from your YouTube channel. You must be getting all these views, all these likes, all these comments and have a big channel. But that's not really the case. So do you want to kind of talk about the importance of not getting consumed with the vanity metrics and you know, how the success of your channel has surpassed maybe the subscribers and the views that you're getting? Yeah, I mean, I used to, I used to just worry about just views and comments and all that kind of stuff. And, and it kind of took away from my focus on why I'm actually doing it, which is to make the phone ring. So, um, you know, once I started just doing the right content, and just staying consistent, and, um, you know, I look at my analytics, but I don't, you know, I don't really look too much into each video specifically on how many comments I'm getting likes. Um, you know, you mentioned I'm not a huge channel. I just hit like 917 subscribers or something um, in 30 some video, 31 videos now, but um, the phone's ringing. So I'm going to just keep pushing through and doing it and not worrying about, you know, I might try to, you know, get more comments to, to get uh, the videos um, more traction, but um, that's not really what I'm focused on. If the phone's ringing, I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's making sure that you're clear, crystal clear on your priorities. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, you know, looking at social media, the priorities is always those vanity metrics of what you see, not, you know, the leads. And I'd much rather have, you know, leads, conversations and closed deals and a whole whack of subscribers and views. Like even truthfully, you know, my channel doesn't get tens of thousands of views on every video, but it's a wildly profitable channel when it comes to, you know, the traffic that comes from it. So I think that's a really important message. But, you know, I'm, I'm really curious about your content process, because this is where a lot of people get stumped and they fall into that analysis paralysis sort of, you know, 
downward spiral and rabbit hole of saying, okay, maybe they've got a video list and they're saying, okay, I'm going to do these. Let's unpack the one that I get the most questions about the vlog tour. So everybody's curious of how did you select the location? How did you prepare for that in terms of, are you getting somebody to film you? Are you using a tripod? Are you doing it selfie style? Are, how are you kind of figuring out what the heck to say in that video? So walk me through saying, okay, you know, Doug's about to go do his next vlog tour. How are you figuring out where you're choosing? How do you know what you're going to say in it? And how are you actually filming it? Yeah. So um, I've tried two different styles of the vlog tour so far, but the one I think that has the best um, return is I, I have a, like a Gorilla Grip uh, with a, um, a GoPro on it. And so I have that and then the, the little mic mounted on top. And I'm just kind of going around, just holding it in front of myself, um, just showing the area and then doing some B-roll pan shots. And um, the way my process on like where I choose and, and um, you know, prepping for it is, I mean, first it's easier now because I've talked to a lot of people relocating to the area and I, I, I keep getting the same questions on, you know, what are the things to do? What are, you know, where are the hot spots? Is it walkable? All, all that stuff. So, um, as far as choosing the place, I kind of, I still use Google keywords everywhere, um, where I'll just see which towns near me are highly searched. Um, cause my channel focuses on the suburbs of Philadelphia, not the actual city. So, um, that's kind of how I choose the area. And then I just research, you know, all the things to do in the area. What are the things, you know, me being local, I know of, you know, all the hole in the wall places or the cool stuff that you're not going to find on a Google search too. So I make sure I showcase that on, on the video as well. Um, and I just drive through, I just drive through, hit all the big, um, you know, the, the well-known areas of each town, the things to do, and then maybe touch on some of the outskirts and, uh, you know, things that people can't find on a Google search. I think that's, that's awesome. And, and there's, there's one more layer of that. And then I'm going to loop it back around so that it really answers what I, I know a lot of people are going to be curious about when you're doing that research, how are you then translating that into a video? So for example, most people know by now, if they've been following me for a minute that I like to bullet point my videos. So I'll find a topic that's I know is going to be in demand. And then I'll write out five, 10 bullet points of what I know I'm going to talk. And I have my laptop out of the corner. And it's like, okay, I can stop I can look, but I ain't carrying my laptop out in a community tour. You know what I mean? So how are you going from finding that data to then bringing it with you outside and knowing what to say. How are you approaching that to make sure that you're on point and that you you have all that information with you and you can walk through and, and present it properly? So I actually, um, when figuring out like all the things to do and the, um, you know, the highlights of the area that I'm going to um, put in the video, I just look at a map and I kind of Google map and I just go in order of like if there's, um, you know, certain neighborhoods that are up and coming, if there's new construction developments that I want to highlight and then go to the main strip um, of where all the shops and restaurants and stuff are. So I kind of just go uh, go through and um, half the time I'm actually just driving, holding my GoPro out the window. So I get a lot of great looks that way. But um but yeah, it's, it's just kind of figuring out, you know, looking at the map and kind of doing a map quest uh, about my route of how I'm going to go about doing things. And then I'll sometimes just, if it flows better, if I just, when I'm editing it, cause I edit it myself, when I edit it, just chop it up and move it, you know, maybe move one area over, over the other, uh, you know, different part of the video to make it flow a little better. Yeah. And, and so let's say you've got five things that you're going to talk about, about a community. Are you putting those notes in your phone and you have your phone in one hand and then your GoPro in the other hand, and that's how you're reading off of it? Or like, how are you actually bringing this information with you and saying it properly to stay on track when you're filming the, the vlog? Yeah. So I'll do all the research ahead of time and then print out, um, you know, I have just on paper, like the bullet points that I'm going to talk about in each section that, I am, you know, driving to so that 
you know, I have ADHD. If I don't have bullet points, I'm going to go off on a tangent. So, um, you know, I make sure I bring that, uh, you know, print out each part that I'm going to stop at and the, the points that I really want to make sure I say in the video. And then I'll just kind of look at it and then hit record and then make sure that um, you know, it's, it's fresh, like top of mind. I don't forget anything. Um, and then the beauty about video editing is, you know, for, forget something. You can just, you know, just look down, say it again, and then just cut that part out. So. Yeah, there's there's a lot of beauty in that in, in being able to have control before it goes public versus like a live video where you kind of have to nail it, uh, you know, while you're on air. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you mentioned that you edit your own videos, and I think this is a really important conversation to have. So let's walk through. We talked about your pre-production, which is how you prepare. We talked about your production of how you record. Let's talk post-production, editing, thumbnails, optimization walk us through what that journey looks like for you. Yeah. So, um, I've tried, you know, using VAs before and for the talking head, like general videos, it, it could work. But I think being the local expert, uh, in my opinion, I, I, it's just better if I edit it myself, cause I know what the area looks like. I know what I'm talking about. And if there's any, any B roll to overlay, I know how, you know, where to put it in and when, um, so as far as the editing, I, I do most of the editing myself just because I know what I'm talking about in the area. Um, and then for the optimization, I have uh, TubeBuddy um, and then also I've tried v uh, vidIQ as well. So the back end stuff to help with the optimization, um, but just following your training, you know, learn uh, how to optimize pretty well and, and make sure that it's that it's um, good to go. And then. I still do my own thumbnails, which is probably why they're not that great because I'm not a graphic designer. But um, yeah, I just I just use like Canva templates and just kind of do it myself. Awesome. And, and what uh, what software are you using for uh, editing? So when I started, I, I had a uh, just an iPhone 11. And so I, I actually really liked iMovie. Um, I now uh, am an Android user, which I know you love. Uh, but, we're done we're done but, yeah stop right. the interview yeah <laughs> no but i uh i i use um i actually just recently found CapCut, um which they have a desktop version which i found very user friendly and it's free they have a pro version but everything you need like everything i do just basic stuff is is in the free version it's, it's much quicker um so i just use that's what i use is CapCut now I had been using something called DaVinci Resolve, but there's a big le learning curve on that one. <laughs> there definitely is. There definitely yeah. is. And, and I think, you know, CapCut's a, a staple. So, you yeah. know, let's loop this back. And there's a reason why I wanted to ask, you know, the entirety of that. You know, when, when we unpack the fact that you're getting consistent results from your YouTube channel, you're now generating listings from your YouTube channel, but you're using a GoPro, you're doing a POV style for some of your tours, you're doing it all yourself. You're editing it, simple thumbnails on Canva. Can you walk me through the journey and just explain to anybody that's listening the importance of just getting started with what you have today? Because a lot of people think, and they get all caught up in their mind of saying, okay, Doug's done really well with vlog, vlog tours and neighborhood tours. Oh my God, I need a camera. I need to go find somebody that can film me. I need to find a script. How do you script when you're outside? Like they get all in this little commotion state instead of just saying, I'm going to go do what I'm going to do. And so kind of talk for a couple of minutes about that journey of you just taking action, being consistent with it and using whatever you have at the moment. Yeah. I mean, I think kind of just looking at, um, well, your channel, actually, because you've mentioned a couple of times your first videos and you've mentioned how, you know, terrible they are compared to to now. And I'm just like, OK, well, I see where you're at now. So I'm like, I know I'm going to be terrible on camera. Um, so it, it's just kind of just like you said, just taking action, just hitting record and um, just making sure, you, you know, you don't need to have all the cameras like I, I invested in a GoPro, but you don't need that. You can just use your phone. Um, probably just want to invest in some kind of audio just to make sure everybody can hear what you're saying. But um, yeah, I think just hitting record is probably the most important thing and knowing that it is a journey and, and you're, you know, you're not going to be awesome at the beginning. Don't compare your chapter one with someone's chapter 20, you know? So um, 
it's just about hitting record, getting more comfortable on camera. Nobody's really comfortable on camera at the beginning. Um, so especially, especially realtors were, you know, we're getting into the business to sell homes, not make videos, but, um, uh, it's just, just getting started and knowing that you're going to get better over time. Yeah. hundred percent. It's, it's a process. And I'm sure that you find more enjoyment in recording content now than you did on your first couple of videos. Right. And, and it could be daunting in the beginning, but once you find your groove, um, like today I have to record 16 YouTube videos for myself back, you know, back in the day when I got started, if, if you told me to do four, I would be, my mind would be, you know, absolute jelly by the end of the day. Um, but now I, I have fun doing it. I'd much rather create some cool content than have to call or have to knock or have to do anything else that is a traditional sense of lead generation. So yep. that leads me to, to one of the other important aspects and a, and a question that I'm going to ask you. You said the importance of just getting started and that's very true. But what I see a lot of people struggle with is getting started in the sense of camera shyness, um, you know, petrified to just click record. So have you always been comfortable in front of being in the camera? Have you, what did you do to get to the point where you said, you know, this, this is going to suck for the first few videos, uh, but I'm going to do it. W what did that process look like for you? Yeah. Uh, to answer your question, no, I, I'm an introvert, so I don't, I don't like to be on camera. I don't like to be out, you know, center stage on stage, talking to people, whatever. So no, I was, I was definitely not comfortable getting started. Um, but I knew that if I wanted to get my family, the lifestyle that they, you know, I want to provide for them, I have to get comfortable being uncomfortable and just doing what I've seen work with other people. So that's kind of, that was the motivation that I, that I used to just kind of rip off the bandaid and just get started and knowing that I'm going to suck, but I'll get better. And it's, it's going to work out if I st stick to the process. I love that kind of going back to that concept of, of getting clarity on your why as to why you're doing it. Because I, I think it's very easy for people that are scared to be in front of the camera. If they're just thinking about themselves, then it's like, okay, do I really need to do this? Uh, I don't feel like doing it, so I'm not going to do it. But when you associate it with your family, kids, spouse, significant other, that's a different level of motivation. And so I, I really like that you you kind of drew that that line between the two. Now, looking at sort of the the mistakes that you you might have faced. Was there anything along your journey that you found was a bit of a learning curve that people can can learn from, whether it be like for me, for example, I remember the endless times that I would get ready to record and then I would forget to charge my batteries or something would be dead or the memory card would be full or like there was all these little things, um, you know, even not time blocking into my calendar to make it a priority. So any kind of lessons that you've experienced over the course of your journey before we talk about you know, the, the lead flow that I know people are going to get curious about. Yeah. Um, the mistakes that I've made really was just the comparison to other people. That was probably the, the, the thing that, that kind of delayed my results, uh, the most, um, even more than not liking to be on camera. Um, but I've like, to your point earlier, I've, I've recorded whole videos before, uh, making sure that the, the microphone was plugged in. And there was no audio and I had to go back and shoot it over. So just making sure, you know, another thing is just making sure everything's working before you hit record. Um, but but I think the the biggest thing, the biggest problem that I see a lot of people do and I, you know, was victim to this, too, was just comparing myself to other people who you know, have been doing it for years and years and now have a team and, you know, trying to compare my production and my quality to their content. It's just, you know, it's not it's not realistic. Yeah, hundred percent. And and was there anything that you did to kind of stop doing that? Um, yeah, I just stopped doing it. <laughs> um, I there was really nothing. I just was like, this. I'm wasting so much time, and I'm yeah. getting stressing myself out by just watching and like, oh, I got to be on their level. That means I have to invest in this and that and get a drone. And I'm just like, this is stupid. I'm just gonna just gonna stop doing this. Stop watching. Just focus on, you know, kind of have tunnel vision. Just focus on you know, what I'm trying to achieve and not care about what other people are doing. Yeah, I love that. And that was the answer that I was looking for is so many people are looking for like some secret strategy of like manifestation and shouting in the mirror to get over comparison. I'm like, 
just just don't like just tune it out ignore it and you know you've proven very well that you know you don't have to be you know the most extroverted person on the planet you don't have to have the best gear you just have to actually do it and focus on getting better yourself you get better yourself you're going to get to the destination eventually which is the leads that you're getting which i think is is a great segue into what do you find that journey looks like for you and what i mean is you know you'll see some people do a call to action in the video saying you know book a call with me and they use calendly you'll see others drive traffic to email others phone so walk us through the process of somebody watches your video how are they typically getting in contact with you and what happens after that first point of contact yeah so um my call to action is i have my phone number and my email uh into in you know after i do my hook and then the introduction um i just say call text email however you want to get a hold of me uh, most people are going to call or text uh, when they reach out there's some emails too but um i guess my lead intake is uh you know get that lead get the information have that first conversation and then set up a a zoom consultation if they're not like local already in the area which most of them aren't if they're watching my channel um so i think the the setting up the face to face is probably the most important thing cuz i mean they've been watching my videos and if they're calling me they already know like and trust me but you know it's important for me to get to know them and like them and you know make sure on the flip side, making sure I'm not wasting my time with, you know, if I'm setting up showings or blocking off the calendar or the time on my calendar, if they're planning to, to, you know, view the area and see some homes. So, um, and then making sure I just get them in my CRM and, and just, uh, following, uh, making sure I have the notes updated and every conversation had just kind of put notes in there. So I know. I love that to, you know, clean and simple, but, but you said something that's really important and I don't want it to be overlooked, which is the like, know, and trust factor. And so what I typically find, and I'd love to hear your take on this, is that people, before they started uh, leveraging YouTube, tend to have had the whole spectrum of clients, clients that they liked, clients they didn't like, nightmare clients, um, because you're kind of just working with anybody and everybody, and it's that cold interaction in the beginning, and then you have to kind of warm them up over time. What has that delineation been like for you in the sense of most times after people start using YouTube, they're working with ideal clients because that client has already made up the decision that they like you. Have, have you seen something similar or what has it been like for you over the last seven years before you leverage YouTube and after you've leveraged it? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you get into real estate, you're just, you're hungry. You're just like, I'll take anything and everything, you know? Um, but then the great thing with, with YouTube is, you know, I have a wife and three young kids and I, you know, I talk about them in my videos. I try to appeal to like the young families and that's pretty much who calls me. And so that's, that's who I like working with. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll help, you know, anybody that wants to work with me, um, you know, but I think that when you put yourself in your videos and kind of show who you are outside of being a realtor, that's kind of who you attract and, and who, I have found I've been working with a lot of is like the young families and, you know, they're asking me how, you know, how, when they call me, I don't even, they don't even introduce their names and they're just like, how's the kids doing? And this and that, I'm like, they're all, they're all great. Sorry. What was your name? You know, it's like, it's a great, it's a, it's a fun experience. It's just totally different than any other, any other platform that I've personally used. Man, I, I I love this. I, I, you know, this is something I really want to kind of dive into then. So we talked about the vlogs and so that's kind of out in the field out and about you know getting outside of your house that's not all that you do you've got a really nice you know mic in front of you right now you do some talking head videos as well where i'm going with this you mentioned the three young kids the question i get constantly from parents is how do you block and and how do you kind of time block for recording when you've got young kids um and how are you kind of preparing for those videos that are actually in your home office? So time blocking, I I just time block de- based on nap time uh, for, for the kids. So I, I just make sure that when I know that they're napping, is which is usually, you know, one o'clock, two o'clock, uh, that's when I'm going to re- be recording because then they won't 
they won't you know yell you know because i'm i'm in my house and most of uh them being home um you know all the noise is right outside the door here so as far as time blocking i just do it uh make sure i record during nap time so there's no inter in, um interruptions but um yeah that's that's kind of how i do it is just make sure that i know um I know my family's schedule, where they're going to be. If they're going to be out, I'll make sure I have some time blocked off then. Uh, but just making sure that it's at a time where I know I'm going to be focused and not have any uh, distractions near me. 100%. I love that. And, and just probably having very crystal clear communication with your spouse and, yeah. and making sure that you guys are on the same page. Now, two other questions that I have kind of related to that. Um, the first one you said that people have an understanding that you've got kids. And so one of the other, you know, things that comes up commonly with people that do have kids is how are you finding ways to weave them into your content? Are you just talking about it? Are you bringing them in? How do people get to know what that looks like in terms of Doug being a family man who prioritizes his kids and his wife, you know, walk us through that journey. Yeah. So, um, I do it, I guess, a couple different ways. I mean, I talk about them all the time. Um, you know, just try to try to make sure I incorporate them in, in what I'm saying. You know, in a natural way, um, not just you know blurting it out like, "Oh, I have three young kids. Use me if you have kids." But um, it, it's just it's just making sure. Like, I talk about them. I talk about like uh, behind me. You can't see it in this view, but I have pictures of them on my on my shelves behind me. Um, so I'm kind of just showcasing who I am like at all time. Um, you know, if I have a rough night or something, I'll make sure I make like a funny joke. Like, oh, I didn't get much sleep last night cause I got a five month old, you know? Um, but just, just making sure I just talk about them and just show who I am outside of being a realtor. Um, that's kind of how I do it. Yeah. It's, it's super important because you know, you, you attract the type of person that you are. And that's what I find all the time when you look at people in our group that have leveraged YouTube in order to attract clients. If they're a family man or woman, that's who they attract as well. Or if they're kind of like a bachelor or bachelorette, or whatever, that's who they attract. And it's really important to be able to, to, like you said, naturally weave that into your content so that people get to know the real you. Um, and that's the only way that you're going to be able to attract the ideal client. Now, a couple other things. The, the first being that kind of process when you look at the different types of content that you're you're creating so you've got you know content that you're doing from your home studio you've mm -hmm. got content that you're doing out and about outside how how are you going about planning that because for me it's very easy all my videos are here the only difference is like sometimes I now record in my new studio. I've got, you know, seven different backgrounds. So I kind of pick which videos I'm doing in which background and I kind of coordinate it way in advance and I know what I'm doing and I'll batch all the videos in that background at the same time. So with you, are you saying this week I'm going to do all of my outdoor shooting the next week I'm doing my indoor or how are you properly planning that so that it's not chaotic and that you can just stay consistent with the different formats? Yeah. So the vlog tours take the most time, obviously, cause I'm driving, I'm getting B roll, I'm shooting it while I'm out there. Um, so I try to do just one of those a month to not overwhelm myself. Um, instead of doing like one of those a week, that'd be kind of nuts. Um, but especially with the editing, but, I just follow the the blueprint that you have for the YouTube blueprint is just kind of doing all the videos on there. And then, you know, I, when you start with doing all the pros and cons, the cost of living and vlog tours and all that, uh, the great thing is that, um, you know, the next year comes and you can just do all, all of them over and uh, of the same ones and just show what has changed over, you know, over the year or what hasn't changed. But um, that's kind of how I, I just follow your blueprint and then just try to do one vlog a month because it is just it's a, it is a lot of work, but it definitely does work. Um, and that's that's what I see. Most people that are trying to relocate to the area, they just want to see what it what it looks like. Um, that's just the biggest thing. Yeah, 100 percent. And and that kind of leads to a, a, a really important thing that I've actually seen quite recently is you know, that blueprint that I'm up out is is pretty much a, a direct roadmap for your first three months. Now, I, I, I know the answer to this, you know the answer to this, but I want you to say it. What do you do after those three months? So once you've done those three months videos and you've got all those topics, 
what are you doing in month four? I'm um, just d doing them again over um, like just different areas and kind of branching out, yeah. you know, like the sub markets near me. So like, you know, obviously Philadelphia is the big one. And then just basically doing the same videos for the different smaller areas around me um, that people are researching. Yeah, I love that because, you know, that's the answer I was looking for is, you know, everybody overcomplicates it and think that you need to like dive into industry trends or that you need to, you know, have sort of some sort of magic viral video that's that's going to appear. Um, but it's just saying consistent and leveraging. You know, you said it earlier and, and I'm glad that you really said this term. You know, you're the industry expert of, of your market. You know what to do. Right. And there's so many agents that are saying like that they're considering themselves industry experts, but they struggle with knowing what to say. Well, you know, there's a bit of a, a disconnect there if that's, you know, happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, we all have access to the MLS and then we all live in our own location. So we should be the experts if we're trying to portray ourselves that way. 100 percent. No, I, I love that, man. So, you know, if, if somebody's getting started on YouTube today and say, okay, I love what Doug's done. You know, I want to kind of kick off that journey too. I'm going to ignore, uh, you know, comparing myself. I'm just going to get started. What would you tell them to do in their first month? Probably just do, you know, pros and cons of living in your area and cost of living. Just, just the main ones, the bullet points, just to get started. Um, easier stuff, you know, you live in the area, so you know what the pros and cons are. It should, should be kind of easy to, to talk about. And Something I didn't mention yet, but like when I started, I tried I my first and only video, I used a uh, teleprompter and it was it was awful. I, I was like I was I was not good on video. I I didn't know what to say. I'm like, I'm going to get nervous. So I'm going to write it out. And you can see my eyes just going back and forth at, as I'm talking. And it just looks so stupid. But people still called me on it, which was dumb. Um, no, but I think just just focusing, I mean, just talk about what you know, and it should just come naturally. And, and, you know, like you've said before, just bullet point, but don't, you know, script it out because then it's just, it's unnatural. And people can tell that. Agreed. And, and, you know, looking at that, that concept of done is better than perfect. Like, you know, so many people get tripped up in like, what do I say in that video? And, and like you alluded to earlier, it's a Google search away. If you don't know what to say for the pros and cons of living in, you know, whatever market, Google it because there's probably a blog or another video out there about it already um, or leverage chat GPT or something in order to just say, hey, you, you can we're at the point where you could basically remove all thought if you really yep. want to to get started. Right. Yep. Definitely. So, you know, let's talk about two, two, two final things here. The first is what can we expect from your channel going forward? I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing. Um, and then we, you know, we start our our. Uh, challenge is doing two videos a week now I've, I've been trying to do one video a week uh, but now we're doing two videos a week and I'm 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 definitely gonna finish it out uh, but I think learning how to batch the content is definitely helped too I had you know it used to be just shoot one video at a time and then and then uh, prep for the next one but but that's what I'll be doing moving forward is is two videos a week doing the same things the same videos that I've been doing, you'll see them over and over, just different areas. I love that. If it's it's if it's not broken, don't fix it, right? And that's the thing that's really really funny is people, you know, think that you you have to like reinvent the wheel all the time when it comes to YouTube. It's like just focus on the fundamentals and be more consistent than everybody else in your market, and you'll win. Yep. <laughs> so, I love that. That's uh, that's your focal point. So, you know, as we kind of bring this together. I always like to ask the question because, you know, obviously you and I are partners and, you know, people are always curious as to, you know, somebody that's been in the industry for seven years. First part is what made you kind of explore the option of partnering with EXP and then what can people expect when partnering with both you and I together? Yeah. So, I mean, EXP, I think there's a lot of misinformation out there, but um, it's more than just, you know, what are, what are the splits? What's the cost? All that stuff. But I think just the possibility and where I'm at in my career and, and you know, I'm, I'm not looking to retire anytime soon. So I'm trying to build something. I think EXP's model just is perfect for what I was looking for. Um, and definitely, you know, people thinking about partnering with us. Uh, I think the collaboration and just the community um, and the encouragement, you know, if you join me, I mean, I'm going to push you to make sure you hit your goals. Um, you know, kind of like you do with me and, and everybody else in our group. I think that's the biggest thing is just 
just the community surrounding yourself with the people that are going to push you toward your goals. They know what their, your goals are and, um, you know, just making sure you're all moving forward on, in the same direction. hundred percent, man. I think that's the best part is that, you know, the, the power of this of not having to give somebody an extra split or feel like you would with the team, but being able to partner with people that are actually doing what you probably want to be doing. If you're watching this interview, um, you know, and be able to get all that support for free and that mentorship guidance and accountability is truly what a lot of people need. And like you say, you said it perfectly, and not many people touch on this enough is that so many people are just focused on splits, caps, fees, all the tangible elements of a comparison, but they're not focusing on the intangible of what makes the biggest difference, which is the environment and the people you surround yourself with. So, you know, Doug, really grateful for you, man. I think it's incredible to see, you know, how you got started, where you've gone, where you're going. Um, and just to see that you've taken a very simplistic approach to doing the right things consistently over time and scaling. So any final words, my man? Um, I think, you know, if somebody's still on the fence on getting on YouTube, just, just do it. Uh, you know, stay consistent for, you know, like you say, if you, it, it, it's, it's something where it's like, if you're going to try it, make sure you're going to do it for forever and not just like try for a few months, see if it works. Because, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I didn't get to reach out for seven months, but um, now they're, you know, multiple a week are calling me and, and and it's been great. So just stay consistent, just do it and just hit record. Love it, man. That's the perfect way to wrap this up. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. As always, I'm going to make sure to link all of Doug's incredible content below, as well as an opportunity to book a call with him to chat about what it could be like to get his support as well as mine to take your business to the next level. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one.